Hello, my name is Addison Davis, and I'm the Superintendent of Schools in Clay County. I want to welcome you to our new initiative called Community Connections. The purpose of Community Connection is for us to have a better opportunity for us to communicate with our constituents, from our students, our teachers, our community members, to really have a deeper dive into what's actually happening in Clay County Schools. This will be an opportunity to talk about initiatives, projects, areas of focus, along with areas of opportunity. This month in Community Connection, we will focus on bullying prevention. And as you know, October is Bullying Prevention Month. However, in Clay County District Schools, know that bullying will not take place as it's zero tolerance implementation in our school district. However, we will address this every single day under my leadership as superintendent. <clears throat> Today, we're talking about bullying prevention. I have the Assistant Superintendent of Climate and Culture, Mike McCauley, here with me to discuss and go in greater detail about what bullying is and what Clay County District Schools steps are taken in order to become efficient with our students and with our community. So welcome, Michael. Thank you. Glad to be. All right. So, you know, start off, the, the biggest thing for us in, uh, in, in, in education and also in Clay County and throughout the state and nationally, there's been this big, giant push for really to, to stop, to cease and um, address bullying within our, within our schools. And one of the biggest things I come through as superintendent of schools is um, the, I guess, the lack of understanding what bullying actually is and mm -hmm. define that. Right, right. So I know that we can define that in our dinner tables and we define that within the community. But I want to really know and let the community know what is it truly, bullying truly defined at from the state's perspective? Right. So that's one of the biggest challenges we have because bullying is um, not unlike harassment, which is not unlike teasing, which is not unlike conflict. So there's, there's a lot of uh, words that are used to describe behavior between kids. Um, and, and bullying is an, an easy, natural one for us to, to sort of fall back on uh, because at the end of the day, bullying is all about um, intentionally causing uh, harm or, or wanting to cause harm to someone else, whether emotionally, physically, or, or whatever. Uh, so bullying sort of captures all of that into right. one, uh, and one that we have to pay very, very close attention to. The state does give us some definition about what bullying um, is from a, an investigation standpoint. It gives us a little bit of structure on, on how we might move forward to, to identify whether or not, in fact, bullying has occurred. Um, and there's three things usually associated. One, it is a behavior that is repeated or has the potential to be repeated over time. Um, one is that it's intentional. So there's, as I am purposely doing this against someone. And then the biggest one, and often one of the more, more difficult items on, on that list, is the imbalance of power. So we're talking about a power structure here where someone with uh, perceived higher power is somehow engaging behavior against someone of lesser power. It's not just size, although it certainly could be right. that someone very large is, is engaging behavior against someone very small, but it could also be uh, a, an upperclassman against a lower classman. It could be um, a, a female against a male. And the, 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 the physical nature is irrelevant. It's more the, the sense of power. Someone part of a, a popular group, for right. example, um, bullying and engaging in behaviors against someone not in that popular group. So we look for those three elements as defined for us by the state. Right, and, and I think it's perfectly said. I think there's many elements that go into defining what bullying actually is from the state's perspective. And as a school district, our job is to make sure we follow that definition and implement mm -hmm. with our schools. Mm -hmm. But the, to, to a, uh, you know, for any viewers out there that are watching from parents or students' perspective, it doesn't mean when we talk about one of the elements was means that bullying is a repetitive action. Right. We want to, you know, there are isolated incidents mm -hmm. that kids are being That's exposed right. to undesired mm -hmm. behavior. You know, from a school district perspective, we will address that at any point, and we encourage stakeholders, mm -hmm. students, parents, teachers to report anything they've seen because sure. we want to address that uh, all the time in an immediate fashion. But bullying really is a part where it continues to be a, a, a repetitive standpoint right, within right. the school district. Something that's repeated, um, but it doesn't have to be repeated, right. and I think that's the thing we have to be mindful of. Um, if we see a situation or a scenario where uh, a behavior occurs between two students or two groups of students, right. um, if the potential is there for it to happen again and again and again without any kind of resolution or understanding and intervention, then that absolutely is bullying. Right. In, in talking about bullying, what uh, we, we talk about our learners, you know, what roles do our students play in related to bullying, whether they're doing it from a preventative measure or whether they're responding to bullying? What do you see the so roles of students? That's actually a really good question because one of the things we have to do is raise awareness, yeah. 
um, not about bullying per se, but as much about um, positive relationships and how what social relationships look like. What we do know is literature will say that uh, will show us that um, in fifty percent of the cases where peers, for example, intervened, um, the bullying behavior stopped. Right. It was it was modified in such a way. Unfortunately. Uh, we only see peers intervene about 20% of the time. So we have to do a lot more talking to our kids, giving them uh, the tools, empowering them to, to kind of see something, say something, right. which is, of course, the national uh, uh, campaign right now. And I will say in Clay County, our students have done a magnificent mm -hmm. job yeah. being able to Absolutely. articulate when they hear something, see something, and our teachers do a fabulous job informing administration so we can take immediate action. Yep. That's one thing that, yep. you know, as superintendent of schools, I'm extremely proud about our stance that we take in the in the relationships that we built with our with our stakeholders, with our students in order to, to make a difference in children's right. life. That's right. And we go into bullying to a part. What do you believe? Is there any differentiation or, or a cause that leads the way to, to for a student to become an active participant as a bully? When you look at kids who, um, children who bully, for example, and I, and I make that distinction for, for you and our audience, uh, we don't really talk about bullying in terms of victims and bully anymore. We, we talk about it in terms of who was the target the child being bullied and who was ultimately the child doing the bullying because bullying is a behavior. Right. It is not an identity. We do not need children in elementary, junior high or high school to sort of be be labeled, if you will, right. as a bully when it's Good it's point. not the individual, it's the behavior. Um, we do know that oftentimes kids who engage in bullying types of behaviors were themselves uh, bullied and in, in, in somewhere. In, in their their past, so it's it's not unusual to sort of see this learned behavior emerge right. as more of a manifestation of something we don't want. Right. Um, uh, oftentimes, kids who feel insecure, um, kids who are put into a situation where they don't have the coping skills, right. so they start to engage in these um, you know less than ideal types of strategies. Right. Uh, to, to interact with their peers. Awesome. So, you you, you know, I, I love it, the fact that, it, that bullying is, you know, for us is defined as behavior, not an identity for yeah. students. Yeah. So we know that students uh, sometimes make undesired behaviors and decisions, mm -hmm. and we want to be able to help them with that with that strategy to be successful. When we talk about bullying, is there any, you know, you, you spoke about coping skills, any early warning signals that we can see that may lead to an individual, you know, becoming sure. a bully? Sure. First and foremost, I, I would offer that, um, Kids are the first ones to see bullying behavior emerge. Um, so it's it's not as much about teachers or, or administrators um, seeing something and, and intervening right there. It's it's usually the kids first and foremost. There's, it, we're not looking for warning signs of someone who might engage in bullying, but we certainly look for patterns of behaviors that kids are expressing. So if they begin to isolate themselves, for example, from their peers, if they become more irritable than, than maybe they used to be, something is going on uh, because they're different than they used to be. And what teachers are seeing in the classrooms every day, they're, they're the perfect front line to give us some feedback on mm -hmm. what they're seeing in terms of their kids. Perfect. And as we talk about, you know, students who are, you know, potential being exposed to bullying, you know, what can we see that maybe some of the effects, not only on the individual that bullies, the individual that's being bullied, or even even an observer? Absolutely. Um, the kids who are are bullied, the targets, uh, we are very concerned about how this affects their mental health, their their sense of well-being. Uh, regardless of the outcome of any kind of uh, investigation, and even if something is determined to be unsubstantiated, it doesn't change the fact that somebody, some kid, is feeling afraid, feeling bad about something that's happening. So we have to address that. And and to your question, the concern is you, you, you can see depression, you can see anxiety, you can see suicidal thoughts start to enter the minds of these kids just because they don't know how else to respond. Yeah, good points. I mean, so, you know, it, it's a, it, so many triangulations, you know, when I talk about behaviors can happen and not only impacts the, the individual, but there's so much impact on those who observe as well. So, you know, it, you know, mm -hmm. we talk about that. If, if we have someone that observes or are being exposed to bullying actions, you know, what can that learner or that student do? Right. Well, so the first and foremost is go to a teacher, yeah. go to an adult, go to a parent even. But 
we have to empower these kids to report it. Um, we see that a lot in our schools. I, I, I got to be honest. It, it doesn't help when you have a child that you see suffering. Uh, as a as a parent, um, you don't want to see that in your in your kid. But sometimes it's hard to go to mom or dad. Sure. It's easier sometimes to go to a teacher or someone else on campus. It's easier sometimes to to talk to a friend or a peer. But they've got to tell somebody, and then that person has to ultimately alert leadership at the school level so we can get in and we can find out what's going on and we can end it. Good. And, uh, you know, for, for those students who are, are watching or those parents, you know, just continue to be an active participant in this, in, in this for us. We are a partner for you. We have so many adults on campus that are ready, stand ready to assist and, and really to help them have a quality experience every single day. And we talk about you know, not only students, anything we want to talk about to our, uh, to our viewers today about what stance our school district is taking. I, I open this up with talking about how bullying will be, you know, it's a zero tolerance within our school district. You know, what, you know, we, we can talk about some of the initiatives we've just put in place with the bullying hotline, the investigating process. Um, do you want to share a little bit of those steps sure. that we're taking? Um, actually, I appreciate the, the fact that we talk about it in terms of zero tolerance because it should be not tolerated ever. Right. Um, bullying is a, uh, a power, it's a control behavior, and it, it has no place in our society and certainly not our schools. The challenge we face is when is it bullying versus conflict versus right. harassment? Okay. Uh, and, and being able to differentiate that. Um, of course, all of us have experienced somebody older than ourselves where it's like, oh, you know, it's, it's a rite of passage and, you know, <laughs> you just got to muddle through it. Uh, and I would argue that that's not the yeah, case. It certainly the not case. in 2019. Yeah, yeah. Never it's a case. very different world than, yeah. than even the world I yeah. grew up in. So, so, so any so to stop you there, any older brothers or any sisters, you know, older sisters watching, you know, yeah, you exactly, know, exactly. Be, uh, you know, be Moms kind, and dads, be kind uh, to your uh, to your younger siblings, grandparents, so. whatever. Yeah. It, um, it 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 really is all about learning how to um, empower yourself, how to self advocate. Um, so that you get through that, that kind of stressful situation. Um, there's a lot to be said about positive role modeling. Uh, parents play a huge role in this in the way that they talk to their student about their peers at school. Um, making sure that you reflect on your own behaviors and you know, am, I, am I doing anything that sends the wrong messages about how we interact with each other. Uh, of course, cyberbullying. We haven't talked about yeah. just the whole social media is, is huge and it has it's created uh, certainly a bigger challenge for us because kids can interact right. from behind a screen right. and never have to feel like they face the consequences that maybe yeah. those of us who didn't have that right. when we were growing up, you either faced somebody or you yeah. didn't. Um, now that's it's not so easy. Yeah, so so good point. You know, as you said, us grow. You know, we're growing up, we didn't have all the social media, the technology that exists today, and we always talk right. about how students oftentimes had the ability uh, to hide behind, uh, you know, uh, you know, text messages or Instagrams or that's Facebook right. messages because right. they never have to confront the uh, the other individual that's involved, and they don't see the harm, the mental harm that's done to that individual. What types of bullying uh, exist out there? You talked about cyberbullying. Are there any other types so of bullying? That bullying basically takes on three different forms. One is physical. So there, there's some actual act of, of interacting with someone physically with your fist, with your, your hands. Um, there's emotional bullying. So it's more of the saying things, the teasing part of it, the subtleties of how you and I interact with each other. And then, of course, the cyberbullying. Right and everything that that implies and what, what goes on online you know, behind that. Yeah, so 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 lots out there, uh, you know, today. Uh, so we do have our, our hotline. Yeah, yeah. We do have our bullying hotline, um, which we started this year. We're very excited about. We've had actually about 16 calls yeah. uh, since we launched it. Um, and, and I know we're, we're just constantly pushing right. that out there. Most of the, the calls have obviously been for uh, folks who are reporting uh, a target being bullied, you know, some other student who's being bullied. But we actually even got one call from uh, someone who was the bully or, or someone connected to the kid who was engaging in bullying behavior, uh, which I thought was really cool to sort of bring all of that together. It is a hotline. It's anonymous. Um, I, I think you can appreciate we've had about four or five prank calls yeah. that have been left yeah. Yeah. Uh, or called right. directly. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and we know that they're pranks because we investigate 
every single call that takes place. We know they're pranks number. because maybe we don't have enough information. You hear giggling in the background. Um, all of those pranks were definitely young kids. Uh, they they didn't sound like adults. So <laughs> we, and we knew that we were going to yeah, have that. It's, it's an anonymous hotline. Right. It's just one more way for us yeah. to, to get that. We have we do have um, uh, in the very near future uh, another platform on our devices to report bullying that's coming up more more information yeah, to come it's coming um, but that'll just be another yeah. tool sure in the way absolutely that, that we... so you know thank you mr mccauley for being with us today it uh, you have you know um, really impacted and moved the needle as it relates to climate and culture in our school district you're helping us become a, a better school district to be able to uh, to elevate the experiences for our kids we mr mccauley talked about the hotline the hotline if you ever need a call it's 904 Three three six six seven nine nine. That's for us to uh, to address any of your needs out there. If you feel in any way, shape, or form that you're being exposed to undesired behaviors that shows an imbalance, intentionality, or um, areas that uh, I put would you. Say in. This is excuse me. This is not a. It's not an easy topic yeah. as a parent. I think, and and you can. It's very easy to get frustrated. Um, I, I I would rather people go directly to a teacher or an administrator in a building. Uh, but I also understand that maybe sometimes you don't feel like your voice is being heard. Uh, we will take all of this exceptionally seriously. We will investigate and we will provide, regardless of the investigation, provide some level of support to the, the, the kids who feel like they're being bullied. Um, bullying, it's, it's, it's not something to take lightly uh, because it has impacts on relationships. It has impacts on mental health. For both the the person being bullied and the and the kid engaging in right. bullying behavior, um, there's there's all sorts of consequences we know that exist. But at the end of the day, we, we hope that you will will talk to us or report to us and give us a chance to uh, uh, help out your students. Right. So once again, thank you. Uh, you know, this is a you know we'll we'll be back again next month with uh, community connections. Next month, we'll talk about family and community engagement and how we continue to uh, involve all of our stakeholders in our community. But this month, we talk about bullying prevention and the importance of it in Clay County District Schools. I will tell you uh, that uh, a number of initiatives are taking place within Clay County in the month of October to, be, to better support this initiative. We have social-emotional learning platforms taking place with lessons embedded within our content. We're working on getting teachers the resources and direct links so they can embed within their lessons as well to have topics to, to discuss and define bullying. And then we'll also have Unity Day on October the 24th. So uh, hopefully you'll be we're, back. We're and, orange. Uh, we're orange. We're on orange. October 24th. <laughs> hopefully you'll be back and uh, we look forward to continuing to, to allow you to have a deeper look within our school district in order for us to become a top five school district in the state of Florida. Thank you and see you soon. Mm -hmm.